This video is sponsored by Ant Keeping Depot, a really great supplier for all ant keepers. And we will now introduce a pretty large colony of red ants and a small lizard snake, including much more. So as always, fasten your seat belts and welcome to this fourth vivarium update. But first, I would like to start by showing you this potentially albino isopod that I found in the vivarium. It is possible that it had recently molted, but still incredibly fascinating to look at. All lightly colored organisms in the tank are in fact pretty amazing to look at too. White or red? There you go. <laughs> Anyways, as you saw from the last episode, the Messer Wasmani colony is doing fine inside the vivarium, collecting grains and increasing slowly but steadily in numbers. Although I would greatly appreciate if they collected them at a quicker rate because they are all starting to grow, which is not inherently a bad thing, but still, these are not plants that I want to compete against the other flora in this haven of a holy land. I don't only provide grains, but sometimes honey as well for other ant colonies in this forest. Here we have one worker from our Lassius umbratus colony. I hope you remember them. They are the socially parasitic ones. But feasting on these sweets secretions were not only them, but also this redder species. Yes, I have introduced another ant species to this vivarium as well. And they are not as clumsy as this girl was. What was that? Come on. This, I think, was the first plant colony for this vivarium that I actually got. The plan was to catch a small portion of a wild colony and one or more of their queens and make them increase in numbers in a smaller vivarium for the time being. Here was the process and it actually worked out just fine. The vivarium was a forest floor vivarium, and I posted some early updates on it on this channel's and everybody else's vivarium forum. If you need any help there, I will be there, even though I was without internet for a long time during the summer for you guys already active there, I'm very sorry for that, but as you can almost see, since I'm really quick here, there are really helpful cheats on, for example, how to keep certain insect, reptiles, plant species, and much more in a vivarium just like I do, along with other species. But anyways, the new species, Myrmica rubra, was now now living alongside many other species within the vivarium. They are known for being a very predacious species that hunts other animals and also possesses a pretty painful sting. Here they are, no joke, hunting an earthworm. How cool is that? But because of their predatory behavior and the fact that I had never kept them with other ant species before made me nervous about having them in our huge ecosystem. So I decided to put them with a small colony of Lasius flavus to see how things were going to pan out. As you can see, they both respect their borders when presented two entities of food, which is great. But what about one? Here I placed a leaf covered with aphids. The outcome of this will define their dominant or submissive nature to other ant species. And what happened was not surprising. Both species really love aphids as a secure and reliable source of food. Were the yellow Lassius flavus ants that immediately started to tend the aphids, claiming them as theirs. But not for long. The red Myrmica rubra workers sensed that something of great value was nearby and soon called for reinforcement. But surprisingly enough, they seemed to share the prize with each other. Although as there came more and more red workers, the yellow ones did the most sensible thing and personally escorted all the aphids they could into their own nests. But incidentally, these hunters had showed me that they were probably compatible with other ant species in a huge vivarium, and I made a decision to introduce them inside the huge ecosystem. Getting an entire ant colony out of a vivarium isn't easy. It's really dangerous for the queen, I had to dig out as much dirt as I could from the vivarium and then assemble them in a tumultuous mix of dirt, eggs, ants and queen. 
and then place it all in the vivarium hoping for the best. This was kind of the beginning of a new era for this vivarium as this was not a small colony and they were definitely the largest colony inside at the moment. All organisms had to adapt to this new force of nature. I myself was super interested on how they would interact with other predators in the vivarium. Would they compete? Or would they eat each other? Or simply leave each other alone? Exciting times! <laughs> The spider populations, for example, have really increased in numbers. Have a look at here on all the artificial rain I've poured on their webs, which shows them to us. Obviously, this is because there are many flying insects inside. And to be honest, I don't even know a few of them. What is that, for example? Introducing aphids inside was also something to be done, and here there is a small colony on a leaf. Unfortunately, no ants ended up taking or even tending them like last time. I guess this species was not compatible with ants, so I will have to get some other species for the next time. The time lapse is pretty epic though. See how many different critters you can see and spot. As you saw in the last episode, the salamanders are hunting well. Maybe too well, as they both are really fat now. <laughs> Look at how she is walking. It is as if she was on her way to Burger King or something. Go do some exercise, you grotesque, obese, yellow striped piece of lipid dense salamander. <sighs> She lives under a smaller log, just by the glass actually, so I have some really informative time lapses of her nocturnal activity. Let's have a look. This must be the laziest hunting method ever. Waiting for slugs to go into your mouth. But no joke, <laughs> the slugs in here are getting decimated. Look at the ass of this poor guy. It's gone. He got out from the cave of doom though, unlike his leopard friend. Some nights were unsuccessful for the salamanders as well. They are really fun to watch these time lapses as you can, for example, see comical things such as how this spider has to each morning remake its web because of the clumsy salamander. Ouch. But even with this great predator population, I saw each night how the prey insects were booming in numbers. I mean, have a look at this living and moving forest floor. Things disappear at a rate faster than we are destroying our planet today. It's insane. Sure, I've seen the new red Myrmica rubra colony hunt worms in the vivarium, but it is far from enough at this point. We need some more predator diversity. I will therefore ask you now if you have any suggestions for a new isopod hunter species that we can add into this vivarium. It has to be European, let me know in the comments. For the insane earthworm population though, I decided to add another large predator, a slow worm. It hunts earthworms and slugs, which puts it in a direct competition with the salamanders. But for now I see them as completely unable to even affect the worm and slug populations that are constantly increasing, meaning that the greatest threats to the slugs and worms come from themselves, not the predators. Surprisingly enough, I've seen this girl during many occasions foraging diurnally in the leaf litter. 
I often don't see more than a protruding tail, but at times I am blessed with a more animated encounter. I always wonder what goes through their heads and what they feel. Is he scared? Lonely? Angry? Happy? Or maybe just horny? Ugly as I am, this often leads to her seeing me and quickly swirling away underground. However, only after three weeks inside this slender and gracious animal has already turned obese. Look at that, it's proper fat. This vivarium should be called the fast food land, it's absolutely unbelievable. Although unlike its neighbors, the salamanders, it hasn't lost its speed. And that's it for this episode. <laughs> Next one will be about fat... No, um, just kidding. Next one will be about when we add a miniature ant colony, observe something alien-like, and finally start with the pond. Gosh, this vivarium takes time to finish. I will see you then and have a fantastic day.